Does C and C++ have garbage collection or some kind of automatic memory cleanup? And if not, why? Let's take a look. Welcome back everybody. I missed last week. Sorry about that. Things got a bit crazy, but I'm back. And today I want to answer a question by Ken Toe, which reads, wondering if you could discuss garbage collection at some point. Is there an auto cleanup of malloc heap variables in Clang or GCC at any time of program termination? How about manual cleaning at at exit? Cheers. So good question. This is actually a question that I get a lot from new students, especially students that are coming from a language like Java, Python, Ruby, something that has automatic garbage collection. And so they're wondering, do we have that here? And if not, why? Because having to manually free all of your pointers seems like a bit of a burden. It seems a little tedious sometimes. And so they want to know. But so today I thought we would talk about why you don't really see a lot of garbage collection in C and C++ and the reasons not that just nobody thought it was a good idea. First, of course, I want to say thank you to all of you who help support this channel through Patreon, where you can get access to source code and my monthly office hour. Also by buying merch, taking courses, subscribing, telling your friends. This channel keeps growing and that's wonderful and you keep helping me move it in the right direction. So thanks. So now back to memory. See, Ken's question here really is dealing with a few different things. It's dealing with garbage collection yes, but also a misunderstanding of the point of garbage collection and what happens when a program finishes. So let's break this down and talk about these things separately. So let's take the last one first. Why do we clean up memory at all? This last part of Ken's comment talks about automatic memory cleanup using at exit. So basically when the program exits, we could have some code that goes through and tries to free all the different memory that's been allocated on the heap. And he also suggests that maybe compilers, GCC or Clang could have something built in that does this automatically when the program finishes. Now, the key thing to understand here is that when your program finishes, when it exits all memory, everything on the stack, everything on the heap, all your variables, your code, everything, anything that's in memory and is not set as shared is going to be unmapped. It's all cleaned up and it's not done by the compiler. It's not done by the programmer. It's not done by libc. It's done by the operating system. Whenever a process terminates, and this is of course, assuming that you're on any kind of modern operating system, whenever your process terminates, the operating system is going to come through and unmap all of the pages for all of the memory for that process. Anything that's not shared with another process and still in use. So that's really important to keep in mind. And with that in mind, since that is actually happening, there's really no point in looking at the exit of a program and going through and cleaning out all the memory. Like that's going to happen automatically. We don't have to do it. The operating system will do it for us. Now, of course, I'm not saying don't be in the habit of freeing your memory. This is a very good habit to be in. But my point is, is that the reason that we free our memory is not because we don't want to leave it around at the end of the program. The point is not the end of the program. It's the middle of the program. If I have a process that runs for a very long time, we're talking days, weeks, months. And if I'm not freeing my memory, that memory can build up and it can build up to a point where my memory footprint is very large and that can impact performance. So that's the point of freeing your memory. And so so if we do explore garbage collection, we're not going to do it at the end of the process. We want to do it in the middle. But OK, so let's assume that I have a C program. Maybe it's a web server. Anyway, it's something that could run for a very long time, hours, days, weeks months. The question is, could we make a garbage collector that will work with C and C++? And the answer is, uh, yeah, sort of, maybe. To understand why, let's take a look at how garbage collectors really work. They typically work on the principle of reachability. Now, let's say I have a data structure like a linked list like this right here. You can see that I've allocated on the heap. Now, let's say I have a pointer. It's either a global or a local variable that's pointing to the head of this list. So my program through this pointer can reach this data structure. It's reachable through that pointer. And of course, all of the other nodes are reachable through the next pointers. Now, if I were working in Java or Python or Ruby or some other garbage collected language, the language's runtime would keep track of how many pointers or references there are to each block of memory. So in this case, each of my blocks of memory, each node has one reference to it. So in this case, they would each have one. And of course, if I add a second reference to the head of the list, then the head node would now have a two stored in its reference counter since there are now two references pointing to it. And as long as my nodes are reachable, 
then they might be accessed later on in the program. And so we need to keep them around. We better not garbage collect them. But as the program runs along, things change. And maybe one of these pointers gets pointed to something else. And maybe this other pointer, maybe that was a local variable and the function that it was declared in ends. So that pointer goes out of scope and now it doesn't exist. Now note that each time one of those pointers stopped pointing to this block of memory, the reference counter was decremented. And now it is zero, meaning that no references or pointers point to this block of memory. So the head of the list is no longer reachable from the program. So now at this point, I can safely say that this node is garbage and I can clean it up. And once it's gone, then the next one can be cleaned up and so on until we've cleaned up the entire list. Now, of course, I'm definitely oversimplifying things a bit, but this is basically how garbage collectors typically work. And we could do this in C and C++, and some people have tried, there's just one problem. And that is that C and C++ are not type safe languages. You see, in Java, a pointer or reference, a reference, a reference is a reference, and that's never going to change. In C or C++, on the other hand, I can cast any set of bits anywhere in memory to be a pointer. It's up to me, of course, to make sure that pointer points somewhere sensible. If I don't, my program might crash or psych fault, but the point is that I can. Anything can become a pointer in C and C++, and we also have pointer arithmetic, so I can take an existing pointer and create new pointers from that pointer by saying something like P plus five. And again, you wanna be very careful with this. Usually pointer arithmetic in a normal correct program will not jump me from one allocated block on the heap to another, but it could. The language allows it, and it's possible that my program might be using one of these odd methods to access a block of memory on the heap. And so if I try to make a garbage collector for C or C++, and it's trying to figure out what is reachable and what is not, it has to consider every possible set of bits that could possibly be a pointer to each block on the heap. And that's going to be a huge pain, very slow and probably not worth it. Of course, you could make some rules. For example, you could say no pointer casting and no pointer arithmetic. And then of course, all you would have to do is update all pointer assignments or pointer operations, and that would allow you to keep track of all the reference counts in your heap. That will slow things down a little bit, but hey, fancy features in most languages do come at a small cost. But the point is, it would not be ridiculous, and yes, you could do it. It is possible, a few people have tried, and I'll leave it to you and your favorite search engine to find examples out there. They're, they're not hard to find. But I hope this helps you see why C and C++ typically are not garbage collected languages. At least you're not getting anything with your compilers just right out of the box. So I hope you learned something today, like this video, if you liked it and want to let the YouTube algorithm know that you want to see more content like this, subscribe so you don't miss future videos. Check out my Patreon if you want to get access to my office hour or source code for my videos. And check out my courses. Uh, I mean, there's one right now, one course. There will be more coming. But if you want to dig a little deeper and until next week, I will see you later.